Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. Now, we've been talking previously in this series about pointers quite a bit and that pointers store an address. Now, recall that an address could be of a variable or it could be as a function because, well, functions have addresses too. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about function pointers and see how they work and why we might want to use them. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So what I've got here is a little example set up here where I have two functions here, add and multiply, both take in two arguments, an X and a Y, and perform the resulting operation. So if we wanted to perform one of these operations, we could call add and do two comma two, for example, or we could also do our multiply here. So let's go ahead and add multiply here and I'll compile this program and I'll run it. And in fact, this probably isn't a good example to do two and two. So just a testing tip, try to use different or weird numbers to confirm that each of our operations are getting the right results here. So I have four and six here. All right, now where does a function pointer come into? Well, instead of explicitly calling this function, we can instead have a pointer to the add and the multiply functions and even change what that pointer points to over time. So maybe let me show you the example and how this works and then it'll make a little bit more sense. So let's say at runtime, we wanna be able to choose one of these functions, add or multiply. So I can create a function pointer. So how do I do that? Well, the data type is again, part of a function here. Here's the return type and some operation that we wanna do here. And then what we do is the arguments. So I have something here that sort of looks like the signature of this function multiply here. Int for each of the arguments here, the first and the second, these are the parameters. And then I have the name of my actual function pointer, which I'm just gonna call op, short for operation. And then the star here, which again, we've been seeing before with uh, the data type when we declare it. Now here is actually the return type. So the function is a little bit weird, but this is a function pointer for functions that have a signature of int, function name, and two parameters, which is exactly what we have in this program. That's why we have declared this. In fact, at this time, I usually like to just save and compile to make sure that I have the syntax right, and that's what it looks like. Now I'll show you an easier way to create function pointers in modern C++ if you hang around to the end of the video, but let's just go ahead and see how this works for now. Okay, so now that I have my function pointer, well, we're gonna do the same thing that we do with our pointers. We have to point them to something, and we do that with the equals operator. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is say op equals add. And really, that's it. So now we're pointing to the add function, and the signature matches, we have two ints here as the parameters and an int as a return type. So now instead of calling add, I'm just going to call this operation. And let's go ahead and rerun our program. And we'll see that the appropriate function is called. So our function pointer here points to the add function and knows to pass in the two values, two and two into x and y and return an integer. Now, why this is cool or useful? Well, we can change what this operation points to at different times. So often you're going to see this in programming when you want to use a function pointer as sort of a callback function. For example, if you've ever done or used rather any graphical user interface, um, and uh, let me go ahead and just draw an example here where you have some uh, button and the user comes over and clicks on the button, usually some function is called. And that function is usually a callback function, which this thing is the function pointer, PTR short for pointer. And that'll call some function that says, you know, what to do whenever the button is pressed. So that's how function pointers are often used. And in fact, we can sort of have our own version of this where, well, let's go ahead and get some user input. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so you can see the full example on the screen here. And let's go ahead and read in uh, a value. So we'll write a little program here that says one for add or two for multiply. And we'll 
read in the user input. And we need a integer n, which we'll read in this input to. And we'll just say if n equals 1, then our operation is an add. Otherwise, else if n equals 2, op equals multiply. So we can see how we're dynamically going to change the behavior of our program here. So let's go ahead and just simplify this a little bit. And just to make this a little bit more of a calculator, we should probably also read in two values for the values that we want to multiply or add together. So I'm simply going to read those in as x and another value for y. And we need integers for those. And then we can do our appropriate operation on x or y. So let me make this just a little bit smaller so you can see all the code here. And we'll recompile. And oops, I just need to uh, make sure that I uh, make this a C out statement. So I'll fix that up. Compile and rerun. So what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and add first and two numbers, three and seven, and we get 10. And I'll rerun this again. This time, let's do multiply. How about seven and uh, nine, which should be 63. So we can see the function has been appropriately pointed to multiply and then the multiply operation. All right, so that's it for function pointers, or at least one use case where you can see them. Again, you'll see these in the code. They'll look a little bit scary sometimes, but this is often how they'll be declared. Now, we haven't talked necessarily about type def, but I want to give you an easier way that you'll also see this in the code. So let me go ahead and just uh, show an example where I can provide a more human readable type definition. And I'll say, let's just call this integer operations. And then when declaring this, instead of this sort of weird syntax, I can instead do uh, something like this, where I say we have some integer operation. And usually we'll see these prefix with something like pfn for function pointer. So I'll go ahead and uh, add that here, pfn. Uh, and let's make the integer operation or integer operations. And then we can likewise just create our op just like we did previously. Okay, so let me just go ahead and compile this just so you can see it works just the same here. So add, and then two numbers, four and five, and we get nine here. Okay, so this is just a little trick that you'll often see in header files if there's lots of use of function pointers, especially in C code bases or code bases where there's C and C++ mixed together. Now, I did promise you that there's also yet another easier way to work with function pointers, and that is with standard function. So let me go ahead and bring up our favorite web page here, CPP reference. I'm going to just move it over to the side here. And we're going to look up standard function and see that we have a way to create function pointers with something called standard function. And this is a way to wrap something that is callable. Now, there's a little example here uh, showing how it's used, but I want to show you how we would do the same thing that we did previously here. So what I'm going to do is first include the appropriate header, functional, or if you need to see, again, this is how I figured out which header to include. So functional. And the syntax for this is, well, it's part of the standard library. And then we put in the function signature. So what it's going to return and the arguments, those are what goes between the brackets. And we have to talk about templates yet in the series, but you'll see here. And again, we could create our op here just like we previously did. So I'll recompile this, rerun it. Let's try multiply. I'll do six and four. So we get a value of 24. So we can see this is working just the same. So whether you want to use the type definition to make things a little bit easier to type out, use the actual function pointer syntax, or use the modern style standard function, you now understand that we're able to create pointers to functions. So folks, that's a bit of a wild lesson, or maybe it's something that's new, but now you know how you can change the behavior or what functions are called in your program.
And this is, again, a really powerful thing. It's used very frequently in event-driven or graphical user interface programming where you need to change the behavior based off of what button was clicked or something that the user did. So I hope you enjoyed something in this lesson and learned a lot from it. And if you did enjoy or learn something, then go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks for your time, folks, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.